Hello there, my name is Gardo. Uh, welcome to my podcast. I am hoping to do this little informal, um, unscripted podcast to hopefully discuss some of the things in nerd culture um, that have been playing on my mind. Uh, hopefully, I'll find some other like minded folk out there who are maybe having some of the same thoughts as I am, maybe want to discuss some of the thoughts I've had, and uh, hopefully we can carry on with this discussion. So, the first topic I'm thinking of today um, for this inaugural episode is a discussion of how what we think of as nerd culture, uh, what is many circles is still thought of as nerd culture, has actually become the best definition we have of popular culture. Now you may wonder what I mean by that. Um, Obviously, nerd culture um, is quite a broad term. But what I usually think of as nerd culture is the sort of things that are used as jokes in 80s movies or things like the Big Bang Theory, things like comics, science fiction, science fiction, sorry, superheroes, um, fantasy epics, board games, tabletop games... That sort of thing. Now, obviously, some of these things have always been popular. Some of them have had their popularity peak and wane over time. Uh, Something like Star Wars, when it came out in 1977, was this huge, huge cultural phenomenon on a a level that was pretty much unforeseen. Um, There's been a lot of series throughout the 80s that have maybe attracted a a cult following of adult fans um, as well as the children that they were designed to appeal to. I'm thinking things like He-Man, Transformers, Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, That was another big one that was obviously much more popular in the 80s than perhaps it is now. But I think the case can definitely be made that... In the past few years especially, I'd say within the last decade, easily, the best metric of what we... Well, not the best metric, that's not the right word. What we'd we'd think of, what would, would have once been considered nerd culture, is now... The very definition of popular culture. It's things that are making money. It's things that are that have people talking. So what do I mean by that? Well, as I've said, obviously, popular culture and nerd culture have always kind of shared a dichotomy. Um, certain things like comic books... Uh, had a popularity in, for example, the late 60s. Um, But they were still very much, I mean, this is primarily in America, um, I think with the rise of like the Marvel comics, DC comics. But it was very much definitely still uh, something that was designed or or thought of being for children. Um, Obviously... You did get adult fans then, as you do now. But I think over the time, comics especially have gone into this sort of niche where they're very overpriced and they're much more targeted towards ad- um, adults rather than children. And have been pretty much since the 90s. But with films and TV shows especially you've always had people trying to take nerd culture, things that we know there is an audience for, however large that audience may be, and turn it into a a much more pop culture phenomenon. Now, as I said, the most primary example of that, the most obvious example, 
is very definitely the original Star Wars and then the 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 sequels for that for the original trilogy Empire Strikes Back Return of the Jedi those were huge huge cultural landmarks um you know those films made for the time comparatively a large amount of money they were blockbusters um the toys sold phenomenally well and this was on a level that obviously you'd had star trek in the 60s and things like that you know science fiction uh, doctor who had been going in britain for years as well by this point so science fiction wasn't new and there was definitely obviously a market for it um but i think star wars was the first to kind of break through into the mainstream like that in a real real way um where it had this appeal for not just for children but for adults it's a proper mass market appeal i don't think anything uh at the time or or, or not for several decades captured that level of just pure fandom i mean obviously like i said uh i mentioned star trek i mentioned doctor who star trek was responsible for a lot of what we think of now as the modern science fiction convention a lot of those would have come about from things like the original series of star trek uh fans gathering to do star trek conventions which then led to things like science fiction conventions in general and obviously now the modern sort of comic cons that we see every year all across the world well every year except for last year when the plague hit but um star wars i think was something that you didn't have to be part of that culture to appreciate to understand to be a fan of something like star trek yes a lot of people liked it a lot of people watched it but i think there was always still a sort of not necessarily a stigma but that's the closest word i can think of attached to it people who were fans of it were kind of looked down upon by general audiences whereas star wars everyone loved it obviously not everyone that is a broad generalization but in terms of the popularity it had at the time it was something that had people talking so why then do i now say that the modern era is where popular culture has really over uh, been overtaken by with nerd culture um when obviously star wars was so big in the 70s and it's because well star wars was pretty much the only one for a long time um even in the early 2000s i think it was when the the star wars prequels came out and you also had the lord of the rings movies and the harry potter movies at the same time there was they those films definitely had success with a mass market lord of the rings was very popular harry potter was this enormous book series with plenty of adult fans despite the fact that it was also designed for children um and those films definitely did numbers they they made a lot of money there was a lot of toy sales but it's not they didn't pervade popular culture in quite the same way uh as the original star wars did but now we're on the other end. Well, I think now we have nothing that's maybe broken through to the extent that Star Wars has, where it was all-encompassing. I mean, the the merchandising for Star Wars was on a ridiculous level. You know, you can find branded Star Wars items for everything, from fruit to toys to lunch boxes. Um, I think Gene Simmons of Kiss once made a joke that they had branded more things than star wars because they branded things like condoms and coffins but that's probably one of the few things that star wars didn't brand 
But in the modern day, you've gone beyond just a big film event. You now have, I mean, obviously the, the primary one that everyone would think of in terms of taking over, starting from nerd culture and then overtaking popular culture. The obvious one that everyone would think of would be the Marvel Cinematic Universe, which is very deserved is very deserving of the title of that it has of being the most successful franchise. Excuse me. It is the most successful franchise for a reason. It over ten years, no matter what people think of the films, I I love the films, I'm not going to lie. I'm a huge Marvel fan. I used to read the Marvel comics growing up in the nineties. Um so seeing these films, seeing characters that m were not popular even among comic fans 20 years ago, now being household names that my children know and know their histories and everything. That makes my inner child do a happy dance. And I'm not even going to lie. It's, it's an incredible feeling. Um, there's something very, very cool as being a comic book fan and being able to, to take these very distilled versions of these characters without their 70 years of baggage in some cases, um, distilled down to their very core values and a few movies full of backstory and just being able to take that and show it to people, show it to my friends who never really got into comics, show it to partners show it to anyone i know and just go this this is what i like and and then being able to say oh yeah i see it i, I yeah i totally get why you like that that that's awesome that's that's something really cool about that but i'm getting off topic what i was trying to say this is the joy of it being unscripted what i was trying to say is that The Marvel Universe has kind of changed cinema in a way. Over, I think 2008 was the first movie now. So we're talking 13 years. Even if we write off 2020, obviously there were movies designed to come out last year, but then Plague, so they didn't. But even discounting 2020, say 12 years... There have been 23 films, plus the associated tie-in shows. And there was a dispute between Marvel TV and Marvel Studios. I'll probably go into it in another video. Um, in another video, another podcast. Um, and that's that debate that was in there between them. Um, has a led a lot of fans to go, well, these shows aren't canon anymore. But they still exist. Shows like Runaways, Cloak and Dagger, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., Agent Carter, Daredevil, Iron Fist, Luke Cage, Jessica Jones, The Defenders, The Punisher. They all exist. And they're all designed to exist within the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Those characters make reference to events in the films, to things from the films. Of course, it doesn't happen the other way for numerous reasons. I think I definitely will do a, a, a podcast for that because, yeah, it's a very interesting topic. But all those characters have been... are in a single franchise. And you can turn and say... They're all connected. They all exist in the same world. So for that franchise to then turn around and make, I think it's something like $25 billion. It's the most successful franchise in history. It kind of deserves it. They did something unprecedented in a lot of ways. Just by building on some very successful movies. There were a lot of missteps early on, but yeah, the the Marvel formula, I think, now has been in place pretty firmly since 2014. I don't think they've had a bad movie since then at all. Some definitely not as 
fun or as good as others, but never a bad movie. I don't think they've had a bad movie overall. They've had some not great ones, but not bad ones. They're not compared to a lot of other comic book movies. And they're doing very well. But again, that's just Marvel. You could still say, well, that's not... Yes, it's nerd culture and it's affected popular culture. But that's not all of popular culture. And you'd be right. Even if I was to point out the other comic book inspired franchises that are out there. For example, the DC Cinematic Universe, um, which recently had the release of um, the Zack Snyder Justice League, which in itself is a pop culture phenomenon. Um, for better or worse, that's the Snyder Cut has been something that's been ingrained in popular culture and will become a talking point in cinematic dialogue and the history of movie making for years, for better or worse. So that is very, very cool. And then obviously there's the the other tie-in shows to the DC characters. There's the connected universe of Arrow and Flash and Legends of Tomorrow and Supergirl and the new Superman and Lois show, which I haven't seen, but I've heard is very, very good. And the other shows that were tied into them. They did one of their annual crossovers. Uh, 2019, this was. 2019, 2020. Before just prior to the plague, which connected plenty of other DC-based film and television universes to that Arrowverse as part of a multiverse, including the original 1989 Batman movie, Superman Returns, Smallville, Titans. And then there's all the other shows that they've had in the meantime, like Gotham, which have not been explicitly tied to anything, but are very clearly based on the same characters. You know, Gotham is a show based on the Batman mythos. I just find that very, very interesting that there's all these franchises based on such. And, and a lot of... I do enjoy them. And I think what they've done on a business side as well of connecting all these characters, that in itself affects popular culture because it prompts the news cycle. We get interested in who's being cast in these films or these shows because we wonder what it could mean and what characters could be appearing in the future. And then with the internet at our fingertips, we're able to research who those characters are in the comics. The latest series from Marvel, um, WandaVision, was a perfect example of this. The theories were off the scale because people were able to read the comics and they knew the comics that one division was based on they knew the stories that had clearly inspired it clearly inspired the characters within it and we were able to say well will we expect will we expect to see mephisto will we expect to see oh evan peters is returning playing as quicksilver he played quicksilver in the x-men movies does that mean the x-men movies are going to tie in because the next movie is multiverse of madness and so on and so forth. Excuse me. But that's all, again, still tied to comic book characters. And yes, it's a movie and TV and everything like that. But again, you might also still say, well, that's still not popular culture. And again, I'd agree. I could say how... Star Trek is back on television. First time since 2004. When Enterprise was cancelled. Um, and the fact that before then it had been on a television. The fact before then Star Trek had been on television pretty much constantly for 18 years. However, is more impressive than the fact that we've got several Star Trek television series now. So that's not that huge. De uh, Doctor Who has been back on television since 2005 and is probably more popular than it's ever been, especially here in the UK. 
But again, that's still not the same thing. It's not all of popular culture. So then you look at other things. We've had the Transformers movies, which were very much maligned, in my opinion, deservedly so. There are some very bad decisions in those films. But they made a hell of a lot of money, mainly in foreign markets like China. But they did make a hell of a lot of money. They were popular films. Video games are being turned into films and streaming series in numbers that we haven't really seen before. Video games were always considered a bit of a, a cursed project for Hollywood to try and take on. I mean, there were the odd successes, like Mortal Kombat, but even things that were maybe financially successful would be critically maligned, like, for example, the Mario Brothers movie or the Resident Evil series, So they've always been a bit of a, a poison chalice for Hollywood. So the fact that we have, you know, high profile streaming series on a game like The Witcher. We have upcoming projects for things like Cyberpunk. Uh, again, however, however troublesome that game's development was. I, I've bought it. Uh, I bought it when it was released. I'd pre-ordered it. The reception to that game means I still haven't really played it properly. I wanted to wait until it was patched out before investing that amount of time in it. And then obviously there's the upcoming Mortal Kombat movie, which I've seen trending very, very well. It's very, very popular. There's a few other mo uh, projects in development that I've heard of. There's the the Borderlands movie, which has announced some casting recently, including some very surprising additions. So it's intriguing that video games have gone from being a, a poison chalice to now being something that's seen as wildly successful. And yeah, Hollywood is investing big money on it. So that's definitely a change. And I think... The spate of superhero movies, even before the Marvel Cinematic Universe, the, the movies that had led into that, uh, based on more niche properties, has definitely helped with that. Even from comics, we've still got Sony constantly trying to make other universes. I think they, the Bloodshot movie that they did a while ago with Vin Diesel, that was meant to lead into a, a valiant cinematic universe. Whether it will or not, we don't know. Because the plague hit not long afterwards. I think they were planning on filming Ninjak and that didn't happen. Uh, obviously some of these movies that come back based on old cartoons and things like that from our childhood in the vein of Transformers don't necessarily do well when they come back to the box office. Uh, like the modern Turtles movies. Um, I quite like them. I, I enjoy the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles in general. Uh, and I think Out of the Shadows, the second one with Bebop, Rocksteady and Krang was a pretty decent movie. The first one, however, I think had tainted audiences a bit too much so that no one really went to see it. But again, that's still not the same thing. I think it's all of those combined with one show television show which to me has probably been the the biggest overtaking of uh, nerd culture into popular culture especially in combination with all the other things and that was obviously the phenomenon that was Game of Thrones now Game of Thrones was it's based on the Song of Ice and Fire books. The book series is currently unfinished. There's only five of the planned seven books published. The other two haven't been written yet. And yet the series Game of Thrones is finished. Now the ending was controversial and a lot of people have not really talked about it since. 
Um, I myself stopped watching after season five because I preferred the books to the series. I didn't like the way some of the subplots in the series were going, so I left it. However, I know many, many people who love that show. Obviously, were ashamed by the ending, but that show became a cultural phenomenon, almost on a level of Star Wars, it, but in a much wider one because it was it was targeted towards adults. So, Star Wars could still be dismissed in the seventies as as kids fair. Game of Thrones was explicitly for adults, but it was intrigue that people discussed. Everyone discussed the latest episode, the theories of where things could go. Theorizing is a as a like I was saying with my discussion of Wonder Vision recently, it's it's an important part of nerd culture. We we analyse things. We wonder where things are going. Where plot threads are going. And. Game of Thrones made ordinary people do that. Ordinary people who you wouldn't consider nerds. Watch that show. If you wouldn't consider them part of fandoms. Part of geek culture. They watched that show excuse me, and discussed what it would mean, what would, what would this character's plot, what would, you know, who would become the main character when Ned Stark died, who, you know, who would sit on the throne at the end of the series, what, all about the connections between different characters, and what it all meant. And that's something you, like I said, you won't, you get very prominently in geek culture. I think part of the reason why season eight was so disappointing was because it didn't match the theories, not season seven, season, yeah, season eight. Part of the reason why season eight was so disappointing for a lot of people was because it dashed a lot of those theories that people had had. People had been theorising about this show for years and what would happen and who would kill certain characters and who would, like I said, who would end up sitting on the throne and whether certain characters would get together, what certain characters' parentage was. I don't want to spoil too much. I, I know I mentioned that Ned Stark dies, but it's like, that's in season one. But there are people who maybe still haven't seen this show. For all I've said, it was a cultural phenomenon. Same with Star Wars. I'm not going to get into spoilers for that. Because I encourage you to watch it. I think Game of Thrones is very, very good television. And the books are phenomenal. As good as the series is. The books are incredible. Uh, and they're just leagues beyond. There's a lot of characters. Don't get me wrong. They are, they are dense books. But they're not incomprehensible. And the writing is fairly easy to read. So, I don't want to give too many of the plots away in case anyone hasn't seen it. Because I would still recommend it, even knowing that Season 8 disappointed people. Even knowing that, even that, knowing that the theories, what happened in Season 8, obviously there were pacing issues because there wasn't a lot of episodes given due to behind the scenes decisions and I disagree with a lot of those <laughs> uh, decisions by the showrunners, but that's neither here nor there. The, the actual plot, I still think works. It could have done with some elaboration, but I still think it works. And I think it's... I still think it's a good season. There's a lot of very, very good television in those seasons, especially the early seasons. And that was not a cheap show to make. By, you know, it was, a, it was a big investment by HBO. I think I read somewhere that 
season one of Game of Thrones had something like 250 odd speaking roles of which 197 were named characters and that's just season one that's the first eight no 10 episodes eight episodes forgotten how many they had in a season 10 first 10 episodes and that's not counting the fact that it filmed in four different countries that had a main cast of like 20 odd people and then a recurring cast of about another 30 again just for that one season <laughs> so it was a huge investment and i think if that first season hadn't been as well received as it had it would have fallen flat on its face straight away now part of the reason why it did so well is because the writing was there the the scripts taking a lot from the books really helped um because like i said those books are quite well written there's a lot of good stuff in them i do think part of the the reason why the latter seasons of the show failed is they ran out of books to draw from. And I don't think the writing coming from the the Hollywood team was as good as the writing coming from George R. R. Martin. But it still did well in a way that people didn't expect. I think it's one of the most successful television series ever. Uh, in terms of just pure numbers, I mean, that's not opinion. I mean, and critically, it was very well received as well. Even, even the later seasons were still fairly well received critically. But, and obviously there are other shows out there now, either on streaming or on television, that draw from nerd culture. For example, The Walking Dead, which is... Its own franchise is based on an image comic book uh, by Robert Kirkman. Very, very good comic book. The comic book has now ended, but the series is carrying on well beyond that point. Um, there's Stranger Things, which, while not being based on an existing property, at least not as far as I'm aware, definitely has crossovers with existing properties, definitely references a lot of nerd culture, um, I know, for example, I mean, I've, I've, I've not seen Stranger Things, I will admit, it is on my watch list, I have every intention of watching it, I never seem to be able to find the time, but I know, for example, that the characters play Dungeons and Dragons, because it's set in the 80s, and Dungeons and Dragons was very popular among 80s youth, so the characters do play Dungeons and Dragons. As a result, Stranger Things, the game, has had crossovers with Dungeons and Dragons. Even in the realms of animation, something like Rick and Morty is very, very much based on sci-fi tropes. Things like uh, dimension travel, space, aliens. There, obviously, there's plenty of other things in there as well. There's a lot of pop culture references. There's a lot of just standard you know, sex and violence to because it needs that to appeal to adults. Otherwise, people would write it off as a kid's cartoon, apparently, because Western animation is nowhere near as good as foreign animation, but that's a completely different discussion. But for any faults that Rick and Morty may have, it's still, again, a very, very, very popular show. Um, I think some of its fan base are... Well, the less said about some of the fan base, the better. Um, to go back to Dungeons and Dragons with Stranger Things, Dungeons and Dragons is having a bit of a revival nowadays. Again, because of things like Stranger Things. But tabletop games in general are also having a revival. There are Kickstarters that I get advertised to myself. Obviously, I have bought some board game Kickstarters. But I know that there are plenty of board game Kickstarters 
that regularly far exceed the targets that they are after in terms of pledges. Many of them contain miniature models, which some people will then paint, um, which again is a whole entirely different hobby. Um, some will have cards, uh, some will be war games, some will be adventure games, some will be role-playing games. And there's a market for all of them, and a lot of them are becoming very, very popular. Some of them are based on existing properties. Some, like Catan, um, which again, I, I, I think it might be inspired by an older game, but the modern version of Catan is... Again, a very popular board game, but it's more advanced than most board games from what I understand of it. And it's just, it's very, very interesting to me that there's so many of these things. And that's not even getting into, you know, the, the large numbers of existing board games or war games or model games that already exist there's plenty I mean, war gaming for example um, the biggest one is Warhammer that's been around for years it's published by a British company called Games Workshop I collect Warhammer I know plenty of people who got back into the Warhammer hobby like I did over recent Covid lockdowns in the UK I know that a lot of people got inspired and interested in Warhammer when Henry Cavill, um, the actor who played Superman uh, and Geralt in The Witcher, he posted on his own social media pictures of his own painted Warhammer army. The figures that he'd been painting himself. And that inspired plenty of people to get back into it. Warhammer themselves are branching into further they're franchising out they're trying to get animations they hired a, a fan artist who made a web series that did phenomenally well called astartes and he now works for them on animation projects they now host astartes on their own web pages rather than on youtube where it was hosted so all these things are just becoming more popular or more visible, at least, to a general audience than I think they have been for a long time. Warhammer, again, like I said, uh, is, also, is also branching out into more accessible ways for people. One of the ways I have seen is they've done partwork magazines. Partwork magazines, uh, I'm, I'm not sure if I have any foreign listeners who have them in those countries, but I know they're definitely a thing over here in the UK. And it's, you know, you collect a magazine or a novel or whatever, um, and you build a collection over every week or every fortnight whenever you get these issues. Warhammer's had three of those, which come with models recently. Um, one that came with novels. There's... Marvel Comics part works. There's 2000 AD Comics part works. Transformers Comics part works. DC Comics part works. Model line part works with like characters from everything from Lord of the Rings to the Marvel Cinematic Universe to Doctor Who. I've seen plenty of them. Even Star Trek ships. That we build. You get a new a new issue with a new model or a new comic book or a new whatever every week there's one out at the minute where you can build the t-1000 from the terminator series terminator's last movie was not particularly a great success and yet terminator is still a part of popular culture enough they can sell a part work based on it I think it's very, very interesting. And to go back to something I touched on earlier, I think part of it is as well that changed popular culture is how we talk about these things. 
not just in terms of what we see and what we experience as consumers, but the things that we don't see, the things that happen behind the scenes. Um, obviously, not all of that news hits the mass market. A lot of it is still contained on uh, news sites devoted to such things like Newsarama, Games Radar, GameSpot, YouTube channels, etc. But certain headlines do make the front pages of things like The Hollywood Reporter, Deadline, Variety. You know, entertainment news media covers casting in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It covers the production deals between George R. R. Martin and HBO for new Game of Thrones spin-offs. It covers the next season of The Witcher. It covers upcoming movies like Mortal Kombat or Sonic the Hedgehog. I think there's... I definitely think that it is a good time to be interested in nerd culture. Whatever that is, whatever that is for you, whether it's board gaming, whether it's role-playing gaming, whether it's video gaming, whether it's comic books, films, um, superhero films, science fiction, fantasy television shows, whatever you are into, it's highly likely that there is at least one project out there for you that you will find appealing, that you will be interested in, not just on its own, but in future projects with that thing. And quite likely, for most things that you could discover, there won't just be one upcoming project that you'll be interested in. There'll be multiple. Probably related to that original thing that you liked. Or recently existing within the last 10 to 20 years. Like I said, if you like video games... Um, Say, for example, off the top of my head, the Resident Evil franchise. It's its 25th anniversary this year, I think. It's recently had a uh, quite popular, critical, critically appraised remakes of two of the original games in the franchise, uh, Resident Evil 2 and Resident Evil 3. They're all available on the current-gen systems, as far as I'm aware. A lot of the older ones are also available on current-gen systems as backwards-compatible games. Um, and then there's the upcoming Resident Evil 8. So if you are a gamer, you have the Resident Evil franchise, all of it, available now to play. But not only that, as I said, there was a series of Resident Evil films that were released, but they weren't necessarily critically successful. They weren't necessarily particularly good. However, there is at least one upcoming Resident Evil film project, and I believe there is a Resident Evil upcoming streaming project. There are also several animated films produced by Capcom in Japan that exist, that have been dubbed into English, and tie in with the storyline of the games that are widely available on DVD or Blu-ray. So if you were to get into the new Resident Evil game when it comes out, there is already there a huge tie-in of material not just an existing game franchise, but
for upcoming films and streaming projects for you to enjoy. Obviously, everyone knows things like the upcoming Marvel projects, the upcoming DC projects, you know, the big films. We know there's a Game of Thrones series coming. We know there's a Lord of the Rings prequel series coming. We know there's uh, the next Fantastic Beasts movie coming. There's a Harry Potter game coming, despite the fact that J.K. Rowling's a colossal turf. Um, I don't think we should be giving her any more money, but still, other people have worked on these projects too, so... And they definitely have a market out there, definitely have an audience, so... But for anything I think you could find to enjoy, there are projects coming out beyond what you immediately get drawn to. To go back to something like Warhammer, yes, they're spinning off into new franchises with animation and there's talk of a, a live action TV show. All of this based on a, a tabletop game featuring miniature excuse me, miniature model soldiers that you paint yourself. But they're also, they have a line of audiobooks, audio dramas. There's plenty of things to immerse yourself in already beyond the miniature game, if that's not for you. Many other projects have tie-in comics, tie-in audio things, tie-in YouTube shorts, even even fan made shorts on the internet. There's a plethora of them, and some of them are really really good. I understand a lot of the apprehension that some people get when they hear fan made. I've seen plenty of horrible fan made projects. For example, I'm a fan of Power Rangers. The quote unquote fan made Power Rangers project by Adi Shankar that came out several years ago with uh, Katie Sackhoff and Jason Vanderbeek. I hated that. I thought it was awful. I thought it took a series based around children and made it not just dark, but unnecessarily brutal and violent and shocking for no real reason that I could see. It didn't serve the story at all. It didn't serve the setting. And yeah, I could have done without it. That's just me. That's just my opinion. But I know there are plenty of other good fan projects out there. For example, I'm also a fan of um, Judge Dredd. There is a fan-made project on YouTube called Judge Minty. Which is a very well done story of a retiring judge within that universe of Judge Dredd. I already mentioned the uh, Astartes web series um, for Warhammer, where the fan is now working for Warhammer, where that that fan made series has now been inducted into the official canon. <laughs> so. Yeah, even if you're looking at fan-made projects, there are plenty of them, and some of them are very, very good. So, yeah, I do think it's a very, very good time to be interested in nerd culture, to be interested in... in these things. Whatever it is that particularly takes your fancy... Uh, as you may have gathered from this this listening to me ramble for the nearly an hour now, I'm a huge fan of a lot of different franchises. So obviously for me, this is an amazing time. And like I said, there's a lot of these things are still quite easy to get into now. The Marvel Universe, yes, it sounds like a huge commitment. If you say 23 movies. But. You know. it's You don't necessarily need to watch all 23. If you watch. Captain America for example. Say he becomes your favourite character. He's only in. I think 8 of the films. So you'd only need to watch. 
eight of those films to get his story. Obviously, you'd be introduced to a whole load of other characters, and you may want their stories. But if you just want... I'd, I'd say you could probably get the basic story of the the first part of the MCU in 10, 10 to 12 of those films, easily. You could skip the rest. Should you skip the rest? No, I think they're all worth watching. But you could. You would get the emotional core of pretty much every main character through those other movies. And that would prepare you for any of the upcoming projects. Any of the current projects on Disney+. Plus. Obviously, I've, I've mainly concerned myself with my fandoms in this, this uh, audio. Because um, obviously I can only really speak about things that I myself am interested in or I myself am aware of. But I know there is plenty, plenty more out there. I'm going to wrap up now because I've been talking for 51 minutes so yeah hopefully some people have liked what I've said you might want to, to message me back and discuss things more with me uh, I'm active on reddit uh, at Gardo I'm also active on Twitter. Well, semi-active on Twitter. That one is at Gardo Hedgehog. Gardo is spelled G-A-R-H-D-O. I will probably put that in the title, obviously. Um, but yeah, if you've heard this, if you're interested in discussing further, if you're interested in suggesting something you'd like to hear me elaborate on more... I welcome that. I hope you've enjoyed listening to me ramble. Hopefully you might want to listen to me ramble again. Also, I want everyone out there to stay safe in these trying times. To look after yourself. Look after your, your mental health and your physical health. And just generally take care of yourselves but make sure you find the time to enjoy yourself whatever it is that that involves you doing personally for me I'm probably going to go watch an episode of Star Trek stay safe and look after yourselves people until next time Thank you my friends for once again joining me on Gardo Goes Geek. Your continued support for this podcast means the absolute world to me and I am grateful for every single one of you who stays and listens to one of my episodes. It means the absolute world. Now if you would like to engage more with me uh, or the podcast we have a discord community small but growing and and we now have commissions open on Ko-Fi. So if there's a topic you would like to see me cover, you can pay me to cover it. All funds will be used for legal purchase of the relevant items where I do not have them. Have a look on the link tree for more information. Until next time, look after yourselves.